911 emergency. Hi, um, I was just assaulted now. Um, someone tried to, some, um, I don't, I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm new Hold to on. the area. He said he was gonna gut me. Go. Okay, yeah. Thing is, I lost my mother a couple of weeks ago. So, like, I'm dealing with a bunch of things right now. I was in the backyard behind the fence digging for 15 minutes, and I, I'm positive that he hit, he hit a weapon. I'm positive that he hit a, a 9 millimeter carbine in the back. He put the gun in the head of his brother before, so it's not the first time. And he did that to his mom. His mom died. A policeman carrying a survivor to safety. Amid this Valentine's Day massacre. Other pupils were hiding under desks and in cupboards. Some teachers defending students with their bodies and with their very lives. The shooting itself was filmed on a phone. Too distressing to show in full. The opening gunshots are shockingly loud. And this footage shows the moment a heavily armed SWAT team entered a classroom to reach terrified students. He looked sullen as he faced the judge. Mr. Are you Nicholas Jacob Cruz? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. You are charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder. I have something very important to tell you. You're charged with some very serious... Many of those killed were found inside the school, but the gunman had escaped. His identity was already known. The description of the subject is going to be a white male, last name wearing a burgundy shirt, possibly Nicholas Cruz. And this was the dramatic moment of the arrest. A police officer running to get handcuffs on the suspect, while another kept a gun trained on the prone figure. We have the suspect detained. Ten four, can we get a positive confirmation on Nicholas Cruz being detained? Ten four. Cruz was a former student at the school with a history of disciplinary problems and with access to all the weaponry he needed. The storm of a young man with access to guns and harboring a grudge beyond comprehension. Earlier today, the president, a fierce defender of gun rights and the Second Amendment, made his first comments on the tragedy. I want to speak now directly to America's children, especially those who feel lost, alone, confused, or even scared. I want you to know that you are never alone and you never will be. We are committed to working with state and local leaders to help secure our schools and tackle the difficult issue of mental health. Kelsey and her fellow students are left to ask a question that goes to the heart of this nation's political culture. Why on earth is America paralyzed, unable to even address this epidemic of gun violence? Robert Moore, News at 10, Parkland in Florida. found a little bit more on the tip. Then I'll come back to the podium, we'll answer some questions. So I wanted to start out by telling you, uh, an Uber car dropped off the suspect at 2019 yesterday, 2.19 p.m. at Stone, Stoneman Douglas High School. The suspect entered the east stairwell, that's building 12, with a rifle inside a black, soft case. The suspect exited the stairwell, pulled the rifle out of the case. At 20, at 2.21 hours and 33 su seconds, the suspect readied his rifle and began shooting into rooms 12.15, 12.16, 12.14. He went back to 12.16, back to 12.15, and then to 12.13. The suspect, the suspect then took the west stairwell to the second floor and shot one victim in room 1230 floor, 1234 on the second floor. The suspect then took the east stairwell to the third floor. 
he dropped his rifle and backpack, ran down the stairs. He exited building 12 and ran towards the tennis courts and then took a southbound turn on foot. The suspect crossed fields and ran west along with others who were fleeing and tried to mix in with the group that were running away, fearing for their lives. The suspect arrived at the Walmart store. He bought a drink at the subway and then left the Walmart on foot. The suspect went to McDonald's, sat down for a short period of time. This was at 3.01 p.m. and he left on foot. At 3.41 p.m., 40 minutes after he departed from the McDonald's, the suspect was detained at 4700 Wyndham Lakes Drive in Coral Springs by an officer from the Coconut Creek Police Department. He was taken into custody without incident. Today, we've interviewed between the FBI, the Broward Sheriff's Office, and a significant amount of investigators from many other agencies, uh, FDLE, a lot of local law enforcement. So over 2,000 people were interviewed and we continue. This is a fluid investigation. We have so many facts coming in, some true, some unsubstantiated, some rumors. It's going to take a lot of time to sift through what's true, what's accurate, and what's not. I wanted to honor the deceased victims of this horrific killing. I'm going to do my best to pronounce the names accurately. Please forgive me if I don't pronounce the names exactly how the families do, but I thought it's very important. I want to pay homage to these families and to the victims. Carmen Centrup, Meadow Pollock, Peter Wang, Nicholas Dwaret, Christopher Hickson, my very, very, very special friend who I'll miss, Aaron Feiss, Luke Hoyer, Alana Petty, Jamie Gutenberg, Martin Duque and Guiano, Alyssa Alhadef, Helena Ramsey, Scott Beagle, Joaquin Oliver, Carol Loughran, Gina Montalto, and Alexander Schachter. May they rest in peace and may God comfort their families. At this time, Special Agent in Charge of ATF, Peter Fraselli, will speak about the firearm. Good afternoon. On behalf of the men and women from ATF, I want to extend my condolences to the families of the victims and to the people of the community. And I also ask that you keep in your thoughts and prayers the first responders who responded out to this scene. Um, 30 plus years in law enforcement, I can tell you it was a difficult one. Um, the firearm that was utilized in this event was purchased lawfully here in the state of Florida just short of a year ago by the individual who was charged with this crime. Um, we're here to help the Broward County Sheriff's Office to follow up on any leads that may pertain to the firearm or anything else that they need. Uh, and again, uh, I ask that you keep the folks who responded to this scene as well as the families of the victims in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we get through these difficult days. Thank you. Special Agent in Charge Lasky addressed uh, some of the questions you had today about tips received regarding uh, the suspect. Mr. Lasky is going to expound upon some of that information. Good afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to provide some additional information about the, the tip we talk, spoke about this morning. On September 25th, 2017, the FBI field office in Jackson, Mississippi received a tip about a comment posted to a YouTube account by someone with the username Nicholas Cruz, spelled N-I-K-O-L-A-S-C-R-U-Z. The comment said, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. Or a shooting and apparently sacrificed his life trying to save some of the high school students. The school's football program tweeted on Thursday that Feist selflessly shielded students from the shooter when he was shot. Feist was an assistant football coach and security guard at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where he graduated from in 1999. 